Hello again, it's David Collins here for another episode of Bitnote. We'll be playing some great video game music, so have a listen and I hope you enjoy. Okay, to start things off, I'm actually going to uh, play music from a game that origins were actually mentioned on this show before the actual game was even created. But rather than k- tell you right away, I think I'll keep you in suspense. Have a listen to music from this game and I'll tell you more about it just afterwards. But before I do, just ask yourself, does it remind you of the theme of any particular TV show you might know? Just wondering if you're able to figure it out. I'll give you a clue. It may be a medical drama. But have a listen and hope you enjoy. was um, Surgeon Stimulator, the ambulance variant of that theme, from the video game Surgeon Simulator 2003 by Bossa Studios. The actual music there was composed by Black Heron. A while back you might remember that I actually did a show covering the uh, Global Game Jam 2013. 
In this case, I took place at Griffith College and I went around interviewing everyone about their experience and how they were planning at doing this uh, game jam. Now, as I've explained in previous shows, a game jam is basically when a bunch of people try to make a video game in a short period of time. Usually they're separate themes and separate teams and they all show that their products afterwards and they see who is the best one but really everyone's a winner because they all got to make a game and they all had a tight deadline in order to work rapidly with a group of other people to make a cool game that basically is one of the fun parts about um, a game game jam well in 2013 i went to griffith college and i talked to a lot of people and as you may recall the theme there was heartbeat that was it well Actually, I think it was actually the sound of a heartbeat. I forget whether they just said heartbeat or sound. But everyone listened to it and started to try to make a game based off of that theme. Now, in Griffith College, I noticed many people, for some reason, chose the theme of robot. For some reason, sometimes a robot having a heart, which is all well and good. But there was a team in Britain that decided to take the idea of a heartbeat to to mean open heart surgery. And this is where it begins. In 24 hours, they developed, or 48 actually, I think, they developed a game called Surgeon Simulator 2013. And essentially, this was a game where you were to perform open heart surgery, or more specifically, a heart transplant. So they produced the game, they released it free because it was a fun little thing they made in 24 hours, 48 hours, and then they ended up receiving a huge amount of attention for it. It became kind of a very novelty game for a while. This happens a bit in game development. Someone will create a game that's fun or creative or a bit of enjoyment and suddenly it'll spread and everyone will try and everyone will have a good bit of fun and, you know, major sites will pick up on it and, you know, it's all well and good. And it kind of was very popular because it um, just was fun and it was kind of very silly. And uh, it was just about doing something that you don't normally do in a video game, i.e. perform open heart surgery. Now, they looked at their reception and the developers thought, hey, you know, people really like this game. So they did what often happens with a small demo game release that's become popular. They decided to make a full commercial version that would have more levels and everything involved in that. And they did it and they released it. And some people did say that maybe they could have had a few more rooms and surgeries and stuff. But no, the game still kept its humor and light and people really did like it and everything. And they enjoyed this. and they could perform more open heart surgery the music you've listened to is of course from the commercial version of the game for the demo they didn't really have time to come up with um, like a full version of uh, the soundtrack or even the composer so they just slapped on the theme tune of Casualty the uh, British medical drama and that's why the the sound the music track you listen to kind of had hints of the uh, Casualty theme tune but um but not all game soundtracks from the game are uh, are derivative. In fact, I'll play you the next one now, which is Take a Number, which is a very smooth, gentle one. This takes place in the reception of the game, so it's just when you're choosing a mission or, well, specifically choosing a surgery to perform and just looking over the computer and everything. And I think I'll just play you the uh, music track before I try to talk a bit more about what the actual gameplay of the game is, which, and this is where it gets very fun. I'll give you a small hint about the gameplay. It's not easy. It's hard. You must have been many, many terrible ways. And that's what makes it fun. But for now, here's Take a Number from Black Heron.
that was Take a Number by Black Heron from Surgeon Simulator 2013 by Bossa Studios. Now, as I was saying, what exactly makes this game so fun? Well, for a start, it doesn't take itself very seriously, but ma the most notable feature of the game is how it, you actually control the surgery. You see, you have control of the hand of the surgeon that goes around and, you know, picks up the scalpels and makes and, you know, severs the arteries and everything. But here's the thing. You have con full control over the hand, almost too much control over the hand. You see, your hand is moved around the screen by the mouse, which seems standard enough. And if you click the left mouse button, the hand descends and if you release it, it ascends. But in order to control the fingers, every single finger on the hand is controlled by a separate key on the keyboard. So if A controls the pinky or W controls the um, you know, the ring finger, the E the middle finger or the index finger and spacebar controls the thumb. Pressing these buttons on the keyboard will make that, you know, finger or thumb if you don't consider your thumb to be a finger to scrunch up. So ideally you'll be able to pick up stuff with this. But in case you haven't noticed already, this is an incredibly fine fine-grained degree of control over an, your hand and this is where it makes it tricky. You basically have to see the patient. First you must remove the uh, covering from their their chest which usually is all, or thing which has usually already been opened up and then you have to bring the hand over, lower it down, close the precise fingers in order to grab the uh, scalpel or whatever in the precise right way, move it over to the uh, body and by that time you might click the right mouse button and then move the house which rotates the wrist back and forth and you know make it go up and down and everything and then you have to precisely angle the hand in the right position to put the scalpel at the right angle then lower it so that your scalpel hits the right place cuts the right thing and then you're able to actually you know remove it and then get on to the next part and some th that's of course if you use the scalpel in the first uh, open heart surgery for instance there is a rib cage and you must destroy the rib cage and one of the instruments at your disposal is a hammer you also have an electric cutting machine and in some late things you even get a surgical laser which you will probably do far more damage to the patient than ever you can and you basically through this incredibly awkward system of control try to actually open up the patient remove usually it's they have to change the heart so remove whatever bad organ is in there and then replace it with whatever good organ you have in replacement and as you can see this is a incredibly messy and b kind of crazy when you completely mess it up the whole thing is actually just very very comical the whole game relies on the idea that messing up and screwing up is about as much fun as actually trying to succeed which to be honest sometimes when you take a series he does get very stressful but other times it's like you're desperately trying to struggle with it and just get it get it done you know the game also realizes it's got no sense of humor for instance if you t it, in the heart thing what you'll normally do is you'll uh, rip out the rib cage and you'll have to sever the heart and get out the lungs but in order to actually reattach the new heart it usually just consists of just dumping the new heart directly into the cavity this is right after you've cut several arteries and it's not it doesn't really pour blood the game is kind of clean like that but you just throw it in the, the heart new heart back into the chest cavity which you just emptied out and then it says congratulations you complete it and you completed the level and text comes up underneath saying yeah i'm sure he's fine so it's like <laughs> how successful this would be i mean to be honest i'd be kind of interested if like the game was like fully intensive like you actually had to sew it up and you had to, you had to do like a, a fully professional job of this but it's clear the whole surgeon simulator is kind of like comically taking the piss out of itself because it's not simulating things even remotely accurately it's all a cartoon but it's kind of funny about how just just trying to just do the work do the best job you can in probably terrible circumstances and probably screwing it up later levels emphasize this the first level of course takes place logically in an operating theater but in the next set of levels you, you do the um, same like heart transplant and kidney transplant but this time you are in an ambulance an ambulance i might say that tends to go around short current corners very very regularly and speed bumps even more so regularly so you might be reaching down for a scalpel you go over a speed bump and absolutely every single thing on it just races jumps up out of the skull out of into the air and falls back down again in fact it got to the point where sometimes it just you know separate the kidneys and just wait for a speed bump to cause the kidneys to go flying out of the patient's body and then deal with them and also sometimes if i just took out the kidneys and didn't want them anymore you know sometimes it's a problem you might get the old kidneys mixed up with the new kidneys you're meant to put them in so i just noticed it go over a speed bump the back of the ambulance would open up and just have the raw kidneys and say screw them and just throw the raw kidneys outside of the rear hospital 
uh, ambulance door, watching as it spins off onto this spinning asphalt. So, as you can see, not much simulation going on here, but just very funny. It's being compared to a game called Quop, which is a free online flash game, and which basically the idea is that the, the because it's a funny game because it's hard to control. And I believe I've played a game called Octodad, which was under a similar philosophy. But I mean, I think that that's what's fun about the game is you do all these sort of crazy things. So I'll move you on to uh, one more track from the game, and uh, before uh, moving on to our next thing, uh, this is Are You Kidneying Me? Uh, operating theater t table. This is um, basically when it, when you're taking out the kidneys. And uh, have a listen. Hope you enjoy. As I said, that was Are You Kidneying Me? Operating Theatre by Black Heron from Surgeon Simulator 2003 by Bossa Studios. I move on to our next game now, which is a classic game. A lot of times in the game industry, licensed games are said to be terrible. These are games based on um, existing properties such as movies, superheroes, etc, etc. Now, to be honest, there are plenty of exceptions to this. People talk like the Spider-Man 2 video game, not the current Spider-Man 2 video game, the other Spider-Man 2 video game from like half a decade ago or a decade, but um, you know, with the, the one Tobey Maguire in it and uh, it's and it's true that a lot of times licensed games are terrible, the simple fact is that especially if it's for a movie, they have to rush the game out for the movie's release. However when I was a kid and playing a lot of classic video games there were a lot of actual licensed games that I actually really liked and thought were damn good. So I'm going to play a track from one of those licensed video games now and uh, I'll see, tell you a bit about what classic Disney 
uh, movie that the game is from and uh, talk a bit more afterwards. So, have a listen. <laughs> That was the desert theme and from the video game Aladdin for the Mega Drive. There was other versions for the Super Nintendo and everything. It was developed by Virgin Games USA with assistance from Disney Interactive Studios. And the actual music was composed by Tommy Tallarico and Donald S. Griffin. So, um, Aladdin, as you can see, was a classic Disney movie. I was just growing up around that time. I have to say, I utterly loved that thing. It seemed to just have everything I was wanted to go for. It was energetic, it was fun, and... Uh, even looking back on it a bit recent, recently when I was watching bits of it, I just thought, boy, you know, there's just so much energy put into every bit of it. Uh, some people talk a bit, maybe it didn't depict the Middle East very well, but uh, I don't really want to get into that topic. If if you're offended, that's fine. But the point is, the game was fun. Uh, the game was energetic, and it was fun, and you controlled Aladdin, and he swung a sword, and it was a platformer, and people would throw things, and you could throw apples at people, and it just... The game was also very comical, for instance. You'd go along the desert, and you'd see, like, one tent with, like, a man symbol on it, then another with a woman symbol on it, implying their toilets, and then another with a genie symbol on it, asking the question of whether genies go to toilets. Indeed, sometimes, if you actually managed to attack an enemy in a certain way, you'd actually cut their cut their uh, belt and suddenly their pants would cool down and while they're trying to pick it up you can obviously destroy the enemy so it was very energetic you'd go hand over hand on ropes bounce on things you'd end there would be hot coals just like in the movie where you'd have to be careful and the game composed of a lot of great original music and music kind of like that was the mega drive like mixed version of the actual music from the uh, actual movie itself and i loved the music from the game itself it's just with stuff like that it's just 
there's no wonder it was just a great adaptation. Everything was bright and colourful, and I believe even Disney uh, helped out with some of the animations for the game, so making everything look smooth and energetic and fun, and all the bright colours and the differently themed levels. I just remember w- working my way through it, and I mean, like, the, it was crazy. If you remember that when when Aladdin finally finds a genie and then there's the friend like me scene uh, scene, that becomes a whole crazy surreal level which makes you think of why the genie's trying to kill Aladdin with all this generally surreal stuff and then of course there's this classic moment when you actually escape from everything I also remember the game because it had one of my funnest cheats if you type the if you press start and press A B B A A B B A you'll skip the level which is really cool but it also made me wonder if the developers of the game really liked ABBA or whether that was just because that was one of the best things they could do with, you know, a Mega Drive control pad. You, you can't really go beyond C there. There's no D button or E or F or anything else. So your ca- your choices are limited. But, you know, did they ever like Ava? Who knows? I'm going to leave you now with a track, with the ending track from that game, which was a lot of fun. This is actually the ending theme, but it's based on a whole new world, which is originally composed by Alan Menken for the, of course, Aladdin movie. Uh, but, of course, Tommy Tallarico and Donald S. Griffin probably had a role in this. And once again, this is from Aladdin by Virgin Games USA with assistance from Disney Interactive. So I'm going to leave you with this now, but Aladdin for the Mega Drive, energetic, fun. It was much better than a lot of, like, games. It was better than a lot of games that weren't even based on movies or anything, and I just really loved it. So, I leave you now with uh, the ending theme from Aladdin for the Mega Drive. This has been David Collins with BitNote. Hope you enjoy, and thank you for listening. (laughs) 